Sorry about that. All right. So we do have just some information to tell you about our management meetings today. So we're skipping to the chase today. We've, um, like I said, we don't have our PowerPoint. Um, as you know, um, like I said, it's just been busy. So we're just going get, to get to the meat of the meeting, the things that you guys like to hear about. Um, and then we'll take some questions and answers. Um, so uh, for 2024, we are continuing to hire for all bases. Um, so there's no um, one specific base that they're looking at hiring for. Um, the rest of this year, though, we are looking at trying to um, get Miami, Fort Lauderdale up to the levels that they need to be at. So there is some staffing um, concentration going on Miami and Fort Lauderdale for the rest of the year. Um, we don't have any news currently about any new bases. Um, we know that there's a ton of rumors out there about what's going to happen next and which ones are going to open next. Um, however, we did not get any new information for you guys as far as um, what was going on with that. So we know we, we feel like there's probably going to be some new bases. We just don't have that information for you. Um, the big rumor mill this month has been um, since Barry's uh, earnings call um, where he talked about network changes. Um, it's been a huge topic for all of the flight attendants. Um, I want to let you know that we are um, trying to get to the bottom of what that means for everybody. Um, and currently, um, we've gone to pretty much every department in the airline trying to get information and to get something we can give you that is solid information. Um, but currently, what we do know is that um, that the company is projecting to make some changes. Um, what that's going to look like for us, um, we don't know yet. Um, we do know that there might be an increase in some turns, but we also know that there is an out, out and backs that keep being mentioned. Um, for those of you who are around when we were a uh, spoken hub airline as opposed to a point to point airline, you know that there were times when all of our airplanes returned to Denver after every city. Um, so they could be talking about us just doing um, that type of flying again, where we always return to a base, but not necessarily the crew, just the airplanes. Um, but since we don't have a firm handle on what the, what they're talking about yet, um, and everyone we've reached out to is still also unsure about what the complete ramifications of that um, that announcement are. Um, crew planning says, you know, one thing they're they're they're. Crew planning is not in a position right now to let us know that things are going to change. They're still trying to figure out what they what the company is talking about when they're talking about changes. Um, so we're not in a position yet to like, like get get busy with you guys and know exactly what's going on. And I don't want to um, tell you something that is not true or something that scares everybody. I want you to know that we're on top of it. And as soon as I know and we know what's going on then we will, we will get with you guys and let you know so that everyone has the information they need. Um, we're also, we've also been working, we're trying to work with um, the training department to get clarification on um, the role of the working crews when there is an ISC and an IOE on board with you. Um, we know that there's been a lot of discussion as to where we're supposed to go. There's too many people on board. Um, where, where do the bodies go? Are we supposed to be in the deadhead seats? Um, what does that mean? So we're looking at the training department to get some clarification for you guys. And as soon as we have that, we'll put that up for you as well. Um, let's see. There's some things going on with um, tardy delayed flights um, where, um, you know, a flight attendant shows up late, the flight is delayed. Um, and they're saying it's always because of the flight attendants. We are trying to work with the company to clarify that some of these um, delays don't end up necessarily on the backs of the flight attendants. Maybe there was maintenance after they got there late, or maybe there was um, paperwork issues, uh, passenger issues. Um, so we're trying to get um, clarification on those TDFs. And we don't want those TDFs put on you until after a fact finding meeting has happened and we can get facts about those, um, what, why the tardy happened, why the, why the tardy delayed flight happened. Um, so we're working with um, management to try and fix that for you guys. Um, let's see, the other... Thing that's gotten a couple people fired lately so i want to make sure you guys are aware of it if you um if you are an fmla an intermittent fmla person and you are getting new paperwork fmla or intermittent fla either one um please make sure you read the paperwork that fmla is sending you there's been changes to the language about what your responsibilities are 
And this is, um, and I, specifically when you're in the approval process. So you, you contact FMLA source and you tell them you want paperwork, they send it to you. Um, and you're in the process of getting the doctors, um, the doctors sign off and getting the approvals. During that time, what used to happen is if you had a, a, an FMLA call out during that time, we would just backdate it two weeks once the paperwork was approved. And right now, and they said since September of 22, this policy has now been in, in uh, happening. So we need to make sure you guys are aware. If you are in the process of getting FMLA and it's not quite approved yet, but you have a call out that you're going to want backdated, you need to make sure FMLA source and the company know about the, the fact that you're going to want to use it with FMLA. So the paperwork says, you are required to report your missed work time to FMLA source within 24 hours of the start of your absence. And you should report your intermittent absences, even if your leave is not approved yet. Um, so this has been um, a part that we lost a couple of flight attendants because we couldn't get their recodes done um, because they didn't follow this procedure that is now in place. Um, this, this, All this FMLA source information comes with your paperwork when you're looking to, um, to get FMLA or F intermittent FMLA. So I just wanted to let you guys know because I don't want to lose, we don't obviously don't want to lose anybody because of a recode issue. Um, so the other fun thing that's happening right now um, is we're trying to get the company to allow all of you to self-notify. Um, hoping, hoping that if we can get this done, that it's going to allow uh, a little less time on hold with uh, crew scheduling. I'm going to let Andrew talk about it because he's been um, working hard on it this week. So give him a chance to see, see what he says. Well, guys, as Jen said, we've been working hard for some time to get self-notification. Um, the company's been working on an app um, that would allow um, more um, immediate functionality. Um, but in the interim, um, we have functionality in our current software that we are going to start utilizing. Um, you'll start, you'll see a memo come out early next week with all of the details and instructions on how it actually works. Um, but the good news is, is that free holiday season, the self notification tool should be coming, um, really quickly for you guys. Um, and that should help mitigate some of the hold times that we see in these higher, um, higher fly seasons. So we're excited for it. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that self notify is going to help a lot of us. Um, and, and like that, the union's been pushing for it for quite some time. So it's yeah. exciting to see that we might actually get it out sometime next week. Um, that's pretty much all that we have for you guys from um, our management meeting today. But if you guys have any um, questions, um, anything that you want to talk about, um, please feel free at this time. You can go ahead and um, raise your hand, and and when we call on you, you can unmute, or we can go ahead. You can go ahead and put something in the chat box, and we'll answer there. As well. Andrew, my screen is glaring, so if you can see, I can't see much. Okay. Um, Rebecca, do you have a question? Hi, Andrew. Hi, Jen. Yeah. Um, I just have a question. Um, EAP has you been inundated. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, guys. Um, I just have a question about EAP has been inundated the last week or so with calls regarding bringing your own alcohol to work. Um, that it must be in a completely sealed, unopened uh, container. Uh, if you were to put it in one of those like um, collapsible flasks or, or something like that, that that is no longer being accepted. Is there any insight that that has yeah. changed? So thank you for bringing that up, Rebecca, because it's been a, a hot topic lately. Um, what happened um, was what somebody did get, um, the TSA did um, have an issue with it for someone going through a CIDA, um, a CIDA, CIDA department, going through, into work, sorry. And um, 
the union and in flight is currently working to try and figure out what the legalities are, what the requirements are. We've told the company that in nowhere in, in all of our training does it say that we can't do this. Um, and so we're working with the company and we will be going over to CIDA at the airports um, and try to find out what the what all the parameters are and we're gonna get that information to you guys. Um, so currently um, I would say hold off on bringing those open containers until we can get clarification um, and make okay. sure that you guys are clear and bringing that into the airport. Like I said, we have um, we know that flight attendants have been doing it for um, 20, 25 years now. Um, so the fact that it's just becoming an issue is something that we need to clarify before, you, before we give you guys more information on it. So give us All a little right. bit of time and we'll, we'll get that out to you guys. Thank you, Jen. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. No problem. Share. Did you have a question? No. Oh, sorry. I thought your hand was up. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Thanks, Share. Any other questions today? Uh, any update about soft blocking the last row? Oh, I hate. All right. So there's in the chat box, um, any update about the soft blocking of the last row? Um, for those of you who um, read the last month's newsletter, um, we did give you guys an update that um, there was obviously a, a um, I'm going to call it a miscommunication, but I don't think that's what it was. Um, misinformation from um, one of the higher ups that we were going to get this taken care of. Um, as it stands right now, like I said, the company is still willing to do and and they are doing according to them, um, not doing it. The auto generating seats will just be from the second second rows back and that's the 24 hour people check in. Um, but like I said, it's not all of the stuff that we talked about before um, is currently not happening. The only thing that is happening is the auto assign when you check in is not technically going to the last row first. Um, and that's where we are with um, soft block right now. And I apologize for that. Um, um, Jen, there's a question about Atlantic parking. Do you want me to do it JD. Hey, JD. Do you have any updates on the Atlantic parking? Yeah, come here. Um, so we've got a question in the chat box that says it's asking about um, the Atlanta base would like to know about parking for employees. I've got your um, your VP, Dave you mentor here, and maybe he can help answer that question. Hey, everybody. Um, we spoke with the supervisors, I want to say, earlier this week. It's going to be the same parking with the parking ticket. Just make sure that if you need parking in Atlanta that you email the supervisors, you can email any of them or atl.inflight at flyfrontier.com. Yeah, Just send them an email, name, employee number, and that you're based in Atlanta. They'll put you on a parking list ticket, and then parking, parking ticket will send you an email, and then you have to have a QR code. Um, let's see, I don't have mine, so. but you have to have a specific QR code. If you don't have that QR code, um, they're going to make you pay the leave. And yeah. Thanks for the update. All right, thank you. All right. Any other questions, friends? I was trying to raise my hands, but I can't find the button. We got you now. What can we help you with? Oh, I just wanted to remind everybody that they've got until the end of the year to use their uniform allowance. And anything you order, regardless of when it ships, even if it ships in January, will be charged to your 2023 allowance as long as it's ordered in 2023. Um, so this is Kathy Precht, our um, uniform, MEC and uniform chair. Kathy, um, I believe, and I just want to make sure that... Um, that clarify for them. The ones that are pre-order and are going to get paid are all only the brand new uniform pieces, not the rest no. of them. Correct? Nope. Everything across the board. Any okay. order okay. that's placed this year will get deducted from this year's allowance, regardless okay. of when it ships. 
Perfect. Thank you. Thanks for clarifying for that for me. I, yep. I thought it was just going to be the new pieces. So perfect. Nope, Thank it's, you very much. It's going to it's going to be everything, and the new pieces okay. should be on the website by next by the end of next week. HPI perfect. is doing the technical aspect of photographing them and getting them loaded on the website now. So perfect. They're All telling right. me by the end of next week. Finally. Perfect. Thank you, Kathy. All right. Thanks, Kathy. Chair, you've got your hand up this time for sure. Yeah, I do have my hand <laughs> up this time for sure. Hey, everybody. I just wanted to let everyone know on the call that um, your Government Affairs Committee is going to be hosting a Government Affairs Give Thanks campaign. And it's for the whole month of November. And we're going to be doing base um, crew room sits across F9. So you'll be able to see all of our beautiful faces. We'll be able to interact with you guys, talk to you guys about flight pack. Um, have you enroll on the spot at a donation amount that's suitable for you and your budget because we're all on the budget, right? I'm all about budgeting. Um, but I just wanted to remind you guys that <clears throat> this tool was actually created to help represent our concerns to the policymakers working on issues that affect aviation across the board. So what that means is it's bipartisan and every Democrat and Republican who supports aviation that's who we want to keep in office. So we need your help with that. Um, you're going to see e-lines coming from us, uh, newsletters. Like I said, we'll be doing crew room sits and we'll even be out in the gate area. So we look forward to seeing each and every one of you guys. And we're super excited and can't wait to see you and sign you guys up. That's all I have. Thanks, Cher. Thank you, Cher. Uh, any other questions? All right. Well, I think with that, sorry, it was a short one today. We hope we got you some good information. Uh, if you have any other questions regarding any of this, um, don't hesitate to reach out to one of your local um, officers. They're just as in the know. They'll be happy to connect with you and get you updated as well. Uh, but thank you for attending today. We really appreciate all of you being here. We'll see you next month. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Later. Bye. Thank you.